Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm actually going to do something a little bit different. Um, it's kind of been on my heart heavy lately, so I decided to tell my testimony. I've watched um, a few here on YouTube. I've seen Allison Love's JB's testimony and as well as a few others. Um, and I was really just inspired by them and by their stories and I figured I'd tell mine. I actually told mine to a group of middle school and high schoolers. There was supposedly like 600 of them at this church um, a few months back and I told them my testimony so I figured why not tell you guys. I feel like it's the perfect time. I was going to wait a little while longer but let's just get started. So as a little girl, I had the most, oh, by the way, I kind of wrote everything down so I would be able to go in order of my life. So don't mind me if I'm reading on, don't mind my purple lips because I just filmed a beauty video on domestic violence month because it's October and I guess it's domestic violence month and yeah, everyone's doing purple makeup. So. Here we go. So as a little girl, I had the most perfect life you could ever imagine. Mom, dad, brothers, a nice home, nice friends, a great school, even my grandparents had beautiful homes that I would always be at. I grew up in the most perfect little town you could ever imagine to raise kids in. It was actually named Friendliest Town in America, and in case you're wondering, it was called Sayville, New York. It's on Long Island. It's a small old town with a beautiful village right by the water on Long Island. I didn't have a worry in the world. At the age of nine, my mom moved us down to Florida. Me, my mom, dad, brother, cats, and hamster drove down to Florida. Growing up, I didn't really grow up religious, so to speak. All I, really, all I recall is my mom taking me to religion. That's what we used to call it and I would watch movies and read about God in this lady's house, in like her basement kind of, with a few other children. I was also baptized as a Roman Catholic before we moved down to Florida. So once we got to Florida, my dad eventually went back to New York because he owns a business up there. He would fly down every few weeks to visit me and it eventually turned into every few months and now years. It has now been three years since I last saw my dad, even though we are in contact still. We talk pretty much every day on FaceTime. But I started to feel like something wasn't right. I would feel depressed at times. I got into bad, some bad relationships at a very young age, the tender age of 12. I even started drinking alcohol because the people I was hanging around did. Because I was like 12 and they were like 16 already drinking. Um, yeah, so my mom put me in counseling, all the friends I thought I had, all they ever wanted to do was party, get drunk, get messed up, get high, go out, you know, like that's not a true friend. But I didn't realize it at the time. And of course I thought that was fun. I heard of friends overdosing and dying from drugs and mixed with alcohol, but it didn't stop me. I was just getting started. I started using different drugs, pills. Xanax, Oxys, um, we would get them from people, I knew people's parents that got them, and we would just steal them, and just to have fun or get high. I didn't like school, and sometimes we would even take the pills at school. Um, we would even steal these pills from the store and overdose ourselves on cough medicine, and that's what got you messed up. Um, yeah, so, but we weren't thinking about the long-term effects or even death from the drugs. I moved around a lot and had some close friends move away from me. I didn't see family much anymore. I didn't even, or I even recall when my aunt invited us to a Christmas play at church and I didn't even want to go, but I did and I hated it the whole time. I met my fiance and my drug use got even worse. We were both using. He introduced me to his old neighbor and we all three started using together. Every time we would get into an argument, I was oh, that I would always just go use. It was like my, I don't know, like cover up from reality. So one time I went to New York with my mom. 
While I was up there, I ended up visiting an old friend that I knew from down here in Florida. We ended up using together. He had some somas that I believe he was prescribed, and those are muscle relaxers, and gave me some. I, I remember I've taken them down here before, so I kind of knew what they did, but I didn't really know everything. I remember I couldn't even shower after that. I kept shaking the whole time from the pills when I was in the shower, trying to shower that day. And I was like, just sh really shaky. The high eventually wore off, so we went to some guy's house and inside they were smoking crack. Something I had just started doing in Florida. So we joined in. I also tried heroin for the first time that day, just a tiny, tiny bit. Next thing you know, we were all out and wanted more drugs, so I was on the phone with people in Florida asking them to send me money. I never got to pick up the money. I woke up in the ICU. All I remember is seeing my mom and dad standing in the corner while doctors were, try doctors were trying to bring questions about the drugs I had taken. I guess they found me outside the apartment building I was hanging out at on the ground having seizures. When the ambulance arrived to get me, they took me in as a Jane Doe, an, an unidentified female, because I guess nobody was with me to tell them my name. The guy I was doing all this stuff with came to visit me while I was still in the ICU. It was ironically Easter, the day that I overdosed. My brother came to the hospital and smacked me in the face, but it still wasn't a wake-up call for me. I got back home to Florida and still did the same drugs. It didn't help me much either that my that a doctor was prescribing me clonopin on top of everything else I was doing, and I was only 17. Um, I even tried to plan on overdosing again and really killing myself that time after I overdosed the first time because I figured I wouldn't like feel any pain from it, so I just really wanted to die. Oh, and in the mix of everything, my dog passed away, so it was like a really bad time in my life. I would actually talk it over with this guy, with my fiance's old neighbor who we did the drugs with. I would tell him how much I want to just go to the beach, lay down, just take a bunch of somas, and just die on the beach. Next thing you know, I started smoking Spice. It was this legal fake marijuana wannabe stuff. And it was just filled with a bunch of chemicals and it's really bad. And I ended up overdosing on that too. Still wasn't a wake up call though. So one morning after a long night of drinking with my fiance, I believe it was New Year's I think, we got into a huge fight that led him to be getting arrested. I called up his old neighbor that day because I was so depressed and I just wanted to get high. Next thing you know, he came and got me and we got high. I got high for like 30 days straight and every day I would write to my fiance so he could read it when he got out and find out what I was really doing. He got out on Valentine's Day and I went to get my nails done and told him my new occupation. I had started working at the strip club. A few weeks later, I found out I was pregnant. I went to the doctor for a UTI and she told me I was pregnant. I was scared because me and Scott, my fiance, had just recently gotten into an argument and split up. So I was really nervous about what to do and what was gonna happen. And and, yeah, and that's where I finally found God, pretty much in the strip club. My first day working at the club, I met this lady, Paula, who was once in the ministry. She invited me to church eventually with her, and I went. Scott and I ended up getting back together once he found out I was pregnant, but it wasn't long after that he ended up back in jail. God knew what he needed to get clean and back on track, and he knew what I needed. The day I found out I was pregnant was the last day I used. I struggled with people telling me maybe I should consider adoption or abortion, but not once did I. I loved Olivia even before she was born, and I'm so thankful to this day to have her. She and God literally saved my life, and I finally have a purpose. 
So in the end, was it worth it? Jesus Christ, how irreparably changed my life has become. It's always the last day of summer and I've been left out in the cold with no door to get back in. I'll grant you, I've had more than my share of poignant moments. Life passes most people by while they're making grand plans for it. Throughout my life, I've left pieces of my heart here and there. And now there's almost not enough to stay alive. But I force a smile knowing that my ambition far exceeded my talent. There are no more white horses or pretty ladies at my door. May the window always be at your back and the sun upon your face. And may the wings of destiny carry you aloft to dance with the stars. And yes, I quoted that from Blow. <laughs> but I love that movie and I figured it fit in perfectly here. And I've always wanted to just say that to somebody. So there you go. Just as a disclaimer at the end, um, I'm not trying to preach to you guys. I'm not trying to tell you this is what you have to do. This is what you have to believe in. I'm not trying to do that at all. You, you're entitled to your own beliefs. You are your own person. But I'm just telling you what happened to me and how my life changed around drastically. And if I can help just one person from this, then I'll be so happy. I mean, maybe you're a drug addict right now struggling and you never really think it's going to end because I know I've been there. Like, you don't think your life's ever going to change around, but I don't know. I just, I really hope I can get across to some of you and help somebody, at least one person out there that's watching this. So that's why I did this and it was just on my heart really heavy lately. So... I was going to wait a little while longer to do it until I had a few more people watching me, but whatever. Um, I'm really happy I lived to tell this to you guys. I never thought I would, so I'm really thankful that I got to. Um, yeah, well, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope I helped somebody out there, and thank you for watching.